If you're an aspiring game developer and want to come up with a great game idea that you'll love and that won't completely flop when you try to sell it on Steam, by the end of this video you'll be able to figure out exactly what your next game project should be in order to maximize your initial success and enjoy the process. I recently released my first game, Air Obscure, and unfortunately it didn't do as well as I had hoped, so I realized that for my next project I'm going to have to be a lot more intentional about my design decisions if I want the game to really do well. And there are two main early stage design decisions that I wish I knew then that the Determine how you're going to be marketing your game and how well it's going to do. The first of these decisions is when I talk a lot about this channel and that is genre. If there's one thing that's true about the indie game market, it's that it's oversaturated and therefore it's really hard to make your game stand out. But actually some genres are a lot less oversaturated than others and arguably some aren't oversaturated at all. If you as a new developer can zero in on these genres early on, well you're giving yourself a big head start. So I looked on BG Insights to see if I could find the perfect genre for my next game project to help me start brainstorming an idea. Alright, so I've got BG Insights open up here, and this is going to tell me the data for different genres. So if I look over here, so I have Horror open, which is what Air Obscure was, and you can see that the median revenue there was $2,300. To go over here, I have Action RPG, which is basically my dream game idea. This median revenue is actually worse, $1,700. And then finally, I have City Builders open, which I heard do really well, and you can see that their median is way better. It's like $9,000. Now if I add another tag on there, for turn-based, then we see that that median is crazy. Look at that, 100,000. That's insane. A city builder wouldn't have been my first choice, but it's very different from Air Obscure, and I'm kind of excited to try one. So now that we have our genre, there are a few fundamental questions that we have to ask to make our idea more precise. The first question is, what games in this genre do I like? And speaking of liking games, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video so that YouTube knows that people find it helpful. You have to know games in the genre that you're working in. If you don't, people will think that you don't have credibility. I honestly didn't know a whole lot about city builders, but I used to love playing them as a kid, so I went ahead and bought Islanders and Airborne Kingdom, two very different city builder games. It's important to actually play and try out a few different games in your target genre to get inspired, but be careful. Avoid worrying about what big multi-million dollar game companies are doing because they can get away with a lot more than what you and I can. Look for games that made maybe between fifty to $150,000 on game stats. This will give you a much better idea as to what might be feasible and what smaller developers have done to achieve that level of success. Here's what I found while playing these games. Islanders did something very unique. They nailed the game down to an airtight core mechanic that's super simple, but allows for a lot of variety. It's also very casual for a city builder. Those games are usually very systemic and complex, so Islanders might actually reach a wider audience than it otherwise would have. Airborne Kingdom is also very unique, but in a different way, because it has all the complex systems that you'd expect from a city builder, but the unique mechanic is amazing. Your city is an actual floating city that moves around across the map and you can do quests and stuff. How much more of a perfect hook can you ask for? And that brings us to our second question. Can I create a unique spin on this genre? This is called the game's hook. The best indie games always have this, and it doesn't have to be something super abstract, like super hot, time only moves when you move mechanic. For myself, I ended up really wanting to put something of my own stories into this game, so I wanted to set it in the same world as Air Obscure, only thousands of years in the past during the creation of the world. I thought it would be really cool to have the player build on these heavenly floating islands in the chaotic void of space. But deep down, I knew this wasn't enough. Both the games I looked at weren't just a city builder on pretty islands, or a city builder in a steampunk world, or a city builder in a fantasy setting, they both have a fundamentally unique, never before seen twist on the gameplay. If my game would just be about building on floating islands, then there wouldn't really be a meaningful difference between that and any other generic city builder. I spent ages trying to figure out what I can do with this to actually make it meaningfully unique, but then it hit me. Okay, so I think I figured it out. Okay, so the islands float, right? So I'm thinking, what if over time, the islands actually move like this? right? And if every turn, they'll actually float away completely and just disappear and you'll never be able to use them again. So what if you could actually tether them like this, you could anchor them together and you could say, okay, I'm building on this island, I like this island, I'm keeping it, but then if I end my turn, maybe a few turns down the road, a new island that you like better that maybe has the resources that you need or more rare resources that you need will show up. And so then you have to decide, do I want to make the sacrifice? Do I want to get rid of the island that I've been building on and instead build on this new island? Or do I want to save the one that I've been using this whole time? I think that could make for a lot of depth. I think that could be a really interesting decision-based mechanic that would be very unique to this specific setting. 
Yeah, I think I think this might be it. By the way, if you want to keep up with the development of this game, jump into the Air Obscure Discord, and I'd also love to hear all about your now, work. Now, by this point, you might be thinking, all right, I have a pretty good idea as to how to come up with an idea. I'll co-start my project. Not so fast, because the next question you have to ask yourself is what kind of game can I actually feasibly make in a reasonable time frame? And this is going to mean that your idea might have to change. You have to learn how long it takes you to make games of different sizes. This is why it's so important to make lots of small games before trying to make a commercial project. It took me two years to make Air Obscure, so I have a pretty good idea of what I can do in that time span, and it's probably going to be a lot less than you think, especially for your first game. If you haven't done any game jams, you should probably participate in a few of those, and believe me, a couple months spent on small games could save you years of projects that never got done because of overscope. Guys, I'm sorry, I, I lied to you. But not completely. But the truth is that all of these steps won't guarantee a perfect idea. You have your genre, you have your hook, you have your scope, and that's all great. You need that. But it's only great in theory. The truth is that you won't know if your idea is really any good until you actually try it out, and more importantly, have other people try it out. And to be honest, I can totally see people getting frustrated with the tethering mechanic in my island game, and without knowing for sure, all I have is a good idea theoretically and not a good idea practically. So, what you think? Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, it sucks. Oh. Also, it's vital to come up with a few slight variations on the main idea too, and not get too attached to just one of them, and try them all out in the prototyping phase. For example, Jonas Tyroller of Grizzly Games did exactly this for Islanders, trying out both 2D and 3D variations, as well as turn-based and real-time gameplay. This may seem like needless extra work, but making all these different prototypes will help you understand what makes your game fun, and will convert your theoretically great game into a reality. Now, once you finally nailed down that perfect idea, remember, there is still a lot that can go wrong during development. I honestly thought that my last game, Air Obscure, was a pretty decent idea, but there were a lot of mistakes I made along the way that I really wish I understood beforehand. To make sure that you don't make the same disastrous mistakes that I did while putting my idea into practice, you really need to check out this video to understand the mistakes that I made and avoid doing them for your project to get the most out of the entire process. Thanks so much for watching and God bless.